So thank you very much for coming, and I hope you're having a, a good day and sort of finding out what you need to know about flight sim and looking at the aircraft and enjoying the sunshine and things. Uh, Steve Halpin is the president of Flight One um, in Atlanta, and um, he's going to do a presentation on a new website that we're launching uh, as part of Flight One called SimStop. And uh, SimStop is not just sort of another website with another web store, but we've um, been working on it over the last two years to put together a number of different sort of features with it. Uh, first part of it is SimStop Connect, which allows you to fly online, use a bit of software and see other people flying online who are also connected with SimStop, um, and then be able to chat with them, communicate with them. Uh, there's a second part of SimStop, which is we want to sort of encourage people get to get together a bit like days like today, but it might just be two or three people from a local flight sim club or a local flying club. So you can get together and form a little group online and then flight one and as sim stop, uh, we will help fund that group, whether it's just to give some money to rent a meeting room or to um, pay for coffee, or even if you get a group together um, to um, help fund a sort of an annual dinner or something like that. So I want to hand you over to um, Steve, who will then be able to run through and um, tell you more about it and show you, hopefully, SimStop in action. All right. There you go. So, on the belt. And just before Steve starts, a little advertisement break. Okay. Um, you'll notice the Mustangs have arrived with uh, Morris um, Hammond and Dave Evans, who very kindly brought them in, and also his daughter Leah Hammond with the Harvard. Uh, they're around. They're, Liz um, put together a calendar with lots of wonderful pictures of Mustangs and Spitfires and other things. Uh, she's selling these for six pounds of 2012 calendar, not 2011. And, uh, uh, all the money, every single penny of that goes through to um, a, a breast cancer charity. So she did a calendar two years ago, um, and this year she's doing another one. So they're around. So go get your Christmas presents early. They're only six pounds, and all of the money, every single penny of it, uh, goes towards um, the, uh, the cancer charity. So they've come down to help promote that. So that's one of the reasons for the Mustangs being here. So if you can help them out, that would be great. Um, and that's it, really. I'll hand you over to Steve. All right, make sure you hang here. <clears throat> uh, Steve Mason in the back might assist me because I've been on the plane for 10 hours up to Scotland back, and I've half lost, lost my voice, okay? So bear with me a little bit. but. Just to tell you, um, one thing that got started with SimStop is, or w where the idea was kind of born, was at the first Open Day event, where two years ago, where there was a, a vague idea of SimStop, and, and as we all met, as we all met, it kind of came together. <laughs> and what happened was, is that we saw a, a situation where. You know, we, we saw the hobby starting to get a little bit tired, is that, that's the way I like to call it. You know, everybody's being so anonymous behind the firewall and uh, anonymous internet. And, uh, <clears throat> and so what, you know, so in a sense, it wasn't just a commercial vision. It was, you know, you know, I would say Flight One was kind of born from two, two levels. It was born out of a passion, just a love for the computers and aviation. At the same time, it just turned into a business on its own, to be honest with you. You know, and yet, of course, it had to take some business sense, but at the same time, you know, I don't think Flight One would, would be where it's at if people like Mungo and Steve and, and others did not put in their heart into it. So, <clears throat> so um, in the idea of SimStop, what we did is we wanted to bring, you know, f allow something more social without it being restricted to having to buy this or buy that, with a clear understanding that it is supported by the commercial efforts of Flight One and SimStop, meaning that you know if. If we can support something for the community and you know and put an investment into it and make it what y'all want more you know then then that's great you see whether it's um, places you know to meet virtually online or 
utilities and flight sim that might offer air traffic control, a lot of other little things. So <clears throat> we basically started with the first, I'll start with, um, you think it's best to start with the connect concept first yeah, or the show, sites? Show, show the connect thing. Okay. <clears throat> the first thing to show you is, uh, I don't know, many of y'all might have seen Connect already if you're part of the iFly forum or something, but because we, we did a little, <clears throat> a little um, demo there, but let me just, without running it first, let me just show you a quick overview in a little mini kind of like slideshow. Okay, well, what we got here, if y'all can see it, is uh, essentially it's, we got the entire United States with a, kind of a custom, custom mapping graphics. And up along the top, this is a standalone application. You don't need flight sim or anything like that. <clears throat> so up along the top here, you just got various functions to turn off layers and stuff like that. So here was a session that me and Steve Mason over here started. <clears throat> and we, um, there's a little aircraft tab here, which shows that he's flying. Of course, you can have 10 people up there. So if I go to the next slide here, it just shows us expanding the slide here, the, 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 the applet that pops out. Okay, now what happens here <clears throat> is that it pulls up it centers on where Steve is and it doesn't show an airplane then you know he's at the runway so you right click the runway it shows an airport diagram and here it happens to show Steve parked right here on the tarmac getting ready to turn on the runway and uh, he has an exterior view of the Islander up <clears throat> all right So now he's back in his cockpit. You might see the little dot where he's turned out onto the runway there. He's departing. He's up in the air, and he's turning off to the left. You can see the virtual gauges. Now, bear in mind, this is just standalone. You can be on any computer anywhere in the world and pick this up. Okay, and that image is refreshed every a few seconds or so from flight sim. <clears throat> now he's just up there flying. <clears throat> Now, I pulled up a little applet here, which shows that it's a little communications applet. All right. <clears throat> so what I'm doing here is I'm typing a chat message to him. And if you can see it, it's now reached him on the top through a SIM Connect message. We're working, we also, we know this is not very practical for now, but we, what, we have a little window inside flight sim that's actually a gauge <clears throat> that allows you to will actually allow you to communicate with anybody and um, um, potentially see the little graphic of somebody you're flying with and it's it's really kind of neat so here we've now cl cl clicked a sl he switched to a jet and you can click on him and it shows that he's now a jet, a cockpit view. <clears throat> you can bring down now the radios, okay, which is virtual radios. And so you can be on the ground or in flights, and this connects to COM2 and Flight Simulator. So you don't even need this running. There's a client that runs just in flight sim. So it's a, you know, <clears throat> you can use any of these frequencies here to uh, join chat frequencies and speak to anybody that you want to. Um, I could be here and S Steve could be flying halfway around the world and I could either, I could speak to him while he's flying and, uh, <clears throat> and vice versa. You can go ground to ground, air to ground, air to air. So, <clears throat> okay, I think that, you know, <clears throat> There's also an icon that will show a, that this is where his ground base is. So if you're not flying, you can also find people who just happen to have the Connect app open, okay? And they can, you can initiate conversations just with people on the ground, just by clicking on them. It'll come up the same. You'll know whether, if they're here, if they're not here, then they're only on the ground, and you can just 
try it with somebody on the ground too. Now this is just a technology preview in the sense that we're going to use this to integrate many user request features like, the, as I said, you know, so we're just testing the basics now. <clears throat> and like one of the big things people want is air traffic control. So you can do lightweight air traffic control. You can be a controller. You pull this up, you'll switch to air traffic control mode, and you can be a controller of any airport you want, <clears throat> and as many airports as you want. So let's say somebody's flying to a holiday destination in the Canary Islands, and some, you know, somebody pulls, you know, they want to be a controller, you know, but that's not something that obviously maybe Vatsim might cover right away or some of the other places, you know, the, the controller will see the, the screen that shows, um, we haven't implemented ATC mode yet, but we might have a little bit here. That's another picture showing what's happening in his cockpit right there. Um, here, you can't really see it, but this is a wide area map, local area map, and you can see his little triangle, but around here you'd see the radial dials, you see um, the, the, you know, all the uh, information. You'll see two air there's one airport here, one here. <clears throat> and this is not even for the air traffic control mode. It just shows you the basics and the um, uh, just, uh, just in a mapping mode. But if you look at it like, um, <clears throat> so if you're in a controller mode, you'll be able to say, um, yes, I want to take on this. Somebody's requesting a controller for the Canary Islands. You will say, okay, and now you're the controller and you can, you know, you can have five screens open, you know, controlling five different airports just for fun. You can do it via voice or text now via, <clears throat> via our, our gauge that we haven't released yet where you'll be able to type and automatically it will give the keyboard focus back to flight sim. So when you hit G, it's not gonna say G, it's gonna lower your gear. So you don't have to worry about that. So, you know, and at the same time, you know, you'll be able to connect to others you know, you know, just, you know, like one of the ideas of this is that when <clears throat> all, all the aircraft go across the North Atlantic, they're sometimes just chatting on the, what, what frequency is that called? It's, it's one of the frequencies where they just have fun and chat, you know, while they're sitting there for the long hours. And that's kind of the concept of this in the sense that, you know, you can now see, you know, see somebody else while they're flying. And, it's, and again, we want a lot of user input because if we're kind of trying to give this to the community, we want what y'all would want to make it interesting, you see? And uh, I can't promise we would do everything, but we would try to do whatever's reasonably practical because it's fun, too, to do this stuff. <clears throat> so let's see where we are here. Yeah, the software for it is all free. So you just yeah. go to the SimStop uh, website, which we've sort of been giving out the, uh, the website details for that. And um, yeah, the Connect software allows you to see where people are flying from locally. So if you're sort of flying in flight simulator out of Shoreham and you use that as your home base, you'll be able to see other people that are flying out the form. I think one of the interesting things is when everyone who's been here today, we found over the last three years coming to the open day, has been um, that just how local everyone is. And you realize that I've seen people that are neighbors like two streets away, you know, is, from, is into flight simulator or into flying and you sort of meet people. So it was kind of you wanting to use Connect so you can go online. How big is the download, Steve? Well, it's four megs, and then it downloads map files yeah. and stuff so as it's needed. It's download. It's completely free. It's easy to install. No advertising. You, there's no advertising or anything else on it. There's no other data it takes from your PC. So it's just a nice, fun, worldwide map where you can then see other people connected. Um, you can see where they're flying from as their home base. You can connect with them there if you want to, if you don't want to. And you can see where people are flying. So hopefully... That's, that's the idea of the map and all the different features in it to sort of bring people together. And one thing that's quite interesting is as you're in Flight Sim, there's a menu. And you can click on the menu and it says, um, you know, start uploading, you know, uh, you know, start the screen capture mode. What that would do is that starts uploading your screen captures for all to see, you see, as they're flying. 
And like, <clears throat> so like this is, I, this is the actual live application, okay? And here we now see two people are connected, okay? So <clears throat> um, the, the network is real slow in this room, so we'll see what we can find. But what's neat is, is that, you know, you, we've had people, you pull it up and then people watch your approach. You know people are potentially watching you fly and it puts another challenge into it. You can't, you know, because all of a sudden I'll check, some, like I saw Colin Lowe once, he was coming out over, coming into Cape Town, he was turning out over the water, coming in, and I texted him and I said, you know, I was watching him come in and he knew I was watching him, you know, so, so um, and what's neat is that, you know, you could have, there's no restriction in the amount of people really connected watching you fly. Okay, so let's see who happens to be here. Okay, Derek and Kevin. Okay, let's see where Derek happens to be. Let's double click him. Okay, so actually he's flying now. Okay, you see him move, you'll actually see the plane move across the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on him. Okay, so what's, what's going on with him is he has, an, he has not yet enabled uh, screen, screen uploading. If he did, you'd see the, the box right here with his uh, cockpit or external image. <clears throat> so you can see now that what he's doing, he's flying, um, he's descending obviously. We don't know where he's descending to, y'all might know better. But, you know, you can see his descent rate, um, heading direction, you know, attitude and see so right now if I open this right here you see he's in Zurich and we don't know whether he knows we're watching him right now so we type hi um, Oops. Okay. Did I not spell that right? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to hit enter. Okay, now he's now seen that message, okay, just for fun. Okay. And now he's obviously coming on in. Uh, let's see, his altitude is now down to, um, he's just about to drop below 10,000 in about, oh, a minute. Let's see if we can get Derek back. And so he appears to be, there he is, he's somewhere north of London. And you see him flying along there pretty fast. So you can just sit on the ground and watch people do all their landings. You can watch them do their, their pre-flight at the, at the airport and just, just fly if you just wanted to have fun. Okay, so. But you can go all the way out to the, to the, um, so what it's doing, it's just trying, what it's doing, it's trying to draw the, um, the little animation, but this computer is having a little trouble doing it. Like right here, you see three people connected in this region that are on the ground, including us. So like if I double click right here, it will center. That's just the little animation graphic. I'll go ahead and close this. All right, this is the, the site that is open now. And, and um, it's still under development, of course. But in a sense, SimStop is a whole community magazine also. <clears throat> and um, as you can see here, you know, we got, you know, we got some quick images leading to articles on the inside, um, different categories of articles and and what would happen is, like, let's say, for example, let's, let's pick something here. 
you scroll on down um, okay so let's take um, an article here flight tips some so what you got here is you'll have an article or tutorial all right and you know just many we have many of these under various categories different categories um, videos a whole link of options here this will have minimal advertising but not not a whole lot we keep it relatively clear and um, you know just nice images that you can view um, one thing about this we 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 know a lot of writers and, and stuff like that <clears throat> but we want to actually have anybody that wants to contribute to this to post um, you know to to get with us and we'll post your article your tutorial your you know whatever you might have that you think the community might be interested in like uh, and like right here we have right for SimStop, which is just a link with, that kind of explains it right here and the, one of the unique things about this is that we want everybody that contributes to SimStop as <clears throat> as a um, as a writer even if you're just doing it for fun you know we'll you know We've gotten with every contributor that goes into our store on the SimStop site, you know, we will reimburse you through either, through something, like um, we'll give you a free product from the site. So um, feel free to contribute and we'll, we'll, in many cases, we'll give you something for free. <clears throat> and then if you go to the store, I won't spend too much time there. It's really a very easy to use store. We're going to add more categories, but it's, we're not going to put a lot of stuff. You'll be able to just find things very easily that you might want to find. Um, you know, um, you will, like for example, you will um, just see something. And we're not, it's really going to be a very simple way to purchase. Flight One products will still mostly be on Flight One, but this allows us to expand our product line without changing what Flight One does, which is really kind of a, a publisher and developer of titles. Okay, now we go to the Connect website itself. So let's sign in under Dave right now. Because he happens to already be here. This is Dave's computer. <clears throat> what it is that, that you're seeing here is you'll see it's kind of a little like Facebook, but we're not trying to copy Facebook. It has a events list, updates, so you can see what your friends are doing. You can have your groups. So like for example, you, cl you click, uh, you click um, groups right here. And there's one aspect I want to show you all about this. Okay, so like here's the Gatwick Flight Simulation Group. Click that. There's a couple members in there already because we're just testing this now, but it's now open. Um, you can now go here and you, you can assign it to your home group <clears throat> based on the store. And what that means is, is that when you do that, we'll, we'll, we're going to take actually a like so if Dave came and he, he uh, purchased something, we'll give 5% of the, the net value of the cart to his selected group. Like as Mungo said, you know, you can use it for whatever you want. So if after three or four months you have enough to meet up at a local pub or restaurant, <clears throat> we'll send it to y'all to use there. In some other cases, do additional sponsoring of your meetings. And we just think that's a little fun additional element. So in a sense, all three of these tie together. And you know, here you have, um, you know, again, we're, this, 
should be a little more easy to use than Facebook and stuff. But you have people that have uploaded, you know, a lot of pictures, you know, um, home cockpits like right here or videos, you know, so I guess. And then you have a on, little online chat. You think you, if your friends are online, you can chat with them. This is from last year's. Uh, this one right here is from last year's event. So I don't know what Dave is saying there, but it's probably something pretty funny. Let's and all, all of this is linkable through, you just go to the main simstop.com site and, uh, you know, and again, as I say, it's a total, it's three different sites that are designed to work together. And uh, I think that about covers what SimStop is. Where it goes from here is going to depend on the feedback we get from people that want to use it. Um, <clears throat> And again, you know, the neat thing about it is, is that if you're away from Flight Sim, you want to see what's going on, go to any computer, log into your account with the application, and you will, you'll be able to uh, see um, what's going on. One other thing <clears throat> is if you go to, like, um, let's go to Dave's friends here. Let's see here, I've got my profile. Okay, so you click on anyone's profile. If they happen to be flying, which Dave is not now, you can click here and you can watch the last three of his live images scroll by. So you can just watch them from any website, even if you don't have that app mapping application. So I guess, that, <clears throat> again, bear with me because I told you I lost half my voice with all the flying, but uh, um, that about covers the general concepts of it. And we're about, oh, I would say three quarters of the way there, two thirds of the way there. And, but we just need people, we want people to, be, people to be more involved. So you can go home tonight and now go to simstop.com <clears throat> click on the connect link when you see connect and you can download the application and start messing around with it and seeing what other people are doing just for fun. Steve, do you have anything to interject? Yeah, I mean, we all have community sitting out in a small village and we all get isolated and swimming as itself gets very isolated. And the people we know tend to be online. We don't meet very often except events like this. And an example was my next door neighbour who we talk about everything until my wife not dropped down swimming. I said, Stephen's in there swimming. Ten years we've been neighbours and we never knew. In communities, it's about getting smaller groups because there isn't enough big events anymore. There's not enough events where everybody attends. But if we can have small groups where there's ten, six, eight people, where you can see the latest products, where we can help, where we can give advice. Because if you look at Windows 7 and Vista, the number of people that have problems setting up their PC, the number of questions we get today and everything else, if we can help in any way, make that smoother, that's what these groups are about. And certainly, I'm going to start creating a group locally for me, because there's a lot of people now that my, it's probably the whole streets this summer, nobody knows <laughs> where we can all get in touch and we can all start and share what's going on. The groups, if you purchase something and your group gets some money, and the groups get money for a venue, because some places charge you for venues, some venues are free, that lets you do different things. A lot of virtual airlines, that applies to them as well, virtual airlines, you can join a virtual airline, and you might never meet anybody in that airline face to face. If they're local, then you can, because a virtual airline will get money from their account and they can create events and run things. If they're running an event, we can support it, we'll support it. Whether it's in the UK, the USA, Australia, South Africa. Yeah. Any of the guys, we'll do it anywhere. You know, it's there to help. It's what you make of it. You know, it's when you see it, you see somebody flying online and you check and you chat, you can get work. You see somebody flying online and send them a message. What a shock that is when they know you're at work and they're flying along and you get a message and flights. <laughs> And like they said, it's kind of scary. When Colin was doing that approach and he came to him, it wasn't maybe the best when he found out. What yeah. <laughs> so it can be loads of fun. And if you're doing a group flight, 
sometimes in bat sim you don't want to go on a unicom channel because you're staying on the channel to listen to controller. You can still chant com too. With this, same with IBO, it makes no difference. You can use the com channels on this as an additional tool, something to play with. And you get the map views, which saves you buying another map app. There's a lot more you can do with it. Where are you going to run it at home? I've got it. My main flight's in PC, and I've got the Connect app running another one. So I've got them networked, and I'm watching the map on the other side, seeing who else is there while watching flight sim. And it gives you another dimension to it. And I also, like I say, if somebody else is there and you want to chat to them, you bring down the voice section, dial in a frequency in COM2, you can have a blather. And it definitely changes the <coughs> way you use it. And uh, one other thing that I haven't mentioned much of is um, something that hasn't, which, something which I really want to have completed and, and implemented is, you know, when you're flying around and you're flying your flights, there's really not much, you know, you know, of course simulation leaves a lot to the imagination and we make what we want out of it in many ways, which is what's great about it. But, you know, one other thing is, is that, let's say we have, you know, I'm making this up. Let's start off with London. Let's say that on a given day, there's 100 passengers in London, 100 SimStop members in London, and they're based in London. And you can now go into, before you make a flight, you can go load, go into the screen, and that's not there yet, though. But you'll now pick up those passengers, which would be the real user profiles. And you'll fly them wherever they may go. Like, what's another good holiday destination? Yeah, it's somewhere in the Canaries, off to Tenerife. So you think you're sitting in London, you come home from work, you find out in the Canaries? Yeah, so you come home from work, you get a postcard in your, <laughs> a virtual postcard in your mailbox that says, welcome to the Canaries. And your, your virtual self has now been flown to the Canaries by somebody from London. And you're going to be stuck there until somebody picks you up and takes you wherever else you're going to go. You see? So, <clears throat> so um, and we're thinking of some fun aspects about it, like you get a certain amount of points for flying people around. If somebody's sitting somewhere for two weeks, you get more points for moving him because he's in, let's say, a non-desirable location. Let's say he's stuck somewhere like Manchester or something. <laughs> you know, and he's, he's been there for three weeks. You know, you're going to get 100 extra points for flying him back to where he needs to go. And you're actually going to pick him up and move him, you know, your, a virtual, a, your actual virtual self. And you can't be in more than one place at a time. So maybe you'll go in and you'll say, you can't move yourself. So you're going to have... You're going to have to request somebody to fly you back home or fly you somewhere else. And I guess that about covers it. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. <laughs>